Mr. Speaker, I rise today in opposition to this rule, uh, which provides for consideration of both H.R. 10, the Scholarships for Opportunity and Results Reauthorization Act, and H.R. 692, the Devol Default Prevention Act. Once again, we are playing grab bag rules, um, uh, and I maintain uh, that that is not the process of regular order. Each time I have the privilege of managing a rule which with only four members of the minority on the committee happens quite often, I find myself in the same position, frustrated with my friends, the House Republicans' complete disregard for regular order, their use of one rule to consider multiple unrelated pieces of legislation, and most significantly, this illusion that in a time when so much can and must be done for the American people, we continue to spend precious time with partisan, dead-on-arrival measures. H.R. 10 would reauthorize the Opportunity Scholarship Program through the year 2021. OSP is the only federally created and funded elementary and secondary private school voucher program in the United States. Um, uh, last night, my friend from Utah came forward and spoke, uh, as is his responsibility. And I will just ask him, uh, do they have the same program in Beaver, Utah, or Centerville, Utah, or Altamont? I didn't know they had an Altamont. I come from Altamont Springs, Florida. They spell it without the E. But they don't have this voucher program that they're trying to foist on the District of Columbia. The program which awards need-based scholarships to children in the District of Columbia to attend the uh, participating private school of their choice was created in 2004 and last reauthorized in 2011. I'd like to note from the outset that the current school voucher program is authorized through September 2016. That's almost a full year from now. Given the numerous pressing and time-sensitive matters facing this body, I can't help but feel bewildered as to why we are rushing to reauthorize D.C. school vouchers, yet we continue to ignore our nation's crumbling infrastructure, income inequality, the need for jobs, immigration reform, the need for sensible uh, uh, gun uh, control in the wake of mass shootings and countless other deaths at the instance of guns, particularly children, and our lack of a long-term budget. I continue to await a straight answer uh, from my Republican colleagues and hope that we can get this question answered before today's debate concludes. Now, I also want to make something clear. The members of the Washington, D.C. City Council have said that they do not want the D.C. voucher program to be reauthorized. In a letter to the chairman of the House Committee on Oversight and Government Reform, the majority of the members of the D.C. Council expressed their belief that federal funds, and I'm quoting them, should be invested in the existing public education system, both public schools and public charter schools, rather than being diverted to private schools. Unquote. Oh, the end of quote. They go on to describe past findings on vouchers saying that, and I quote them, the evidence is clear that the use of vouchers has had no statistically significant impact on overall uh, student achievement in math or reading, or for students from schools in need of improvement. I end the quote. Despite this very clear letter, in what I can only describe as, quote, typical Republican fashion, this body is going full steam ahead in its efforts to impose its political will regardless. I remind those here today and watching at home that Washington, D.C. is a federal district. Congress maintains the power to overturn laws approved by of the D.C. Council, can vote to impose laws on D.C., and gets final approval 
of the D.C. Council's budget. Washington, D.C.'s delegate uh, uh, to the House of Representatives, my very good friend and a mentor to all of us, not only on this issue but countless others, Ms. Eleanor Holmes Norton, who has served in this body for 24 years, is not permitted to vote on final passage of any legislation, let alone legislation directly intended to govern the jurisdiction which she was elected to serve. Um, one might hope that Congress uh, would consider the wishes of the representatives of Washington, D.C., and the nearly 660,000 residents of the district who are uh, taxpayers without representation. But as we see today, that simply isn't the case. Mr. Speaker, the underlying legislation would make significant changes to the way in which the program is evaluated, and that is a problem. In 2012, the Washington Post published an article titled Quality Controls Lacking for D.C. Schools Accepting Federal Vouchers. The piece examined some of the schools receiving vouchers. Among them were a non-denominational Christian school that occupies a sustained storefront between a halal uh, meat um, uh, shop and an evening wear boutique. The school consists of two classrooms, and students travel nearly two miles down Georgia Avenue to the city's Emory Recreation Center for gym classes. Another school follows a learning model known as Suggestopedia, a philosophy of learning developed by a Bulgarian psychotherapist, Gorgo, Gorgi Lazanov, that stresses learning through music, stretching, and meditation. And a third is described as an unaccredited K through 8 school supported by the Nation of Islam, which occupies the second floor of a former residents east of the Anacostia River. The classrooms are described as being former bedrooms, and the only bathroom in the school was described as having a floor blackened with dirt and a sink coated in grime. The bathtub was filled with paint cans and cleaning supplies concealed by a curtain. With descriptions like this of schools, just a few miles away from this chamber, I would like to think we'd want more evaluation on these schools, not less. Moving on to H.R. 629, a very bogus bill that plans for the unprecedented default on the full faith and credit of the United States. This measure is a debt prioritization bill and one that elevates the payments of debts to bond holders including Switzerland and the Cayman Islands, China, and they would be paid over the obligations to America's troops, veterans, seniors, and students, as well as Medicare uh, recipients. Um, uh, as Democratic members of the House Ways and Means Committee astutely put it, and I quote them, under this legislation, the effect would be to pay China and Japan and others first, and some Americans not at all. We've been down this road before. Indeed, the debt limit standoff and government shutdown of 2013 cost an estimated 120,000 jobs and disrupted public and private credit markets so profoundly that the total estimated borrowing costs for the federal government, businesses, and homeowners during that crisis total approximately $70 million. Defaulting on our debt is simply not an option. And H.R. 629 is, as Treasury Secretary Jack Lew put it, default by another name. We cannot play of um, uh, this game. We need to be about the business of honoring our obligations. The last time we went down this road, our debt rating was lowered, and I suggest it may happen again. Mr. Speaker, I reserve the balance of my time.